think that the day I heard the words, you have cancer, for the third time would change the lives of five women and impact a community for years to come? My name is Linda Ryan. I am a three-time cancer survivor. In 2002, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I had it surgically removed, and radioactive iodine was the treatment. I thought I had checked cancer off my list, but two years later, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer as a result of a routine pap exam. The treatment was a hysterectomy and nothing else, so again, I thought I had checked cancer off my list, and I went on living my life. And part of living my life was running a marathon. In 2011, I had been going to the gym consistently and figured I was fit and not getting any younger, so if I wanted to run a marathon, it was the perfect time to do so. Four months later, I completed the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon at the age of 43. When people would ask me during my training, which they often did, why do you want to run a marathon? Ironically, my answer was that it was on my bucket list. Four weeks after running the marathon, I found a lump in my neck. When I consulted Dr. Google, I could find absolutely no positive storyline to accompany the location of the enlarged lymph node. The thought was that my thyroid cancer was back and I was facing a huge neck surgery that came with a host of risks. I then found some lymph nodes in my groin area, which alerted the doctors it probably wasn't thyroid cancer. So after biopsies and comparisons to previous biopsies, it was determined that my cervical cancer was back with a vengeance. It had spread to my lymph nodes. I was accepted into a clinical trial at MD Anderson in Houston. The trial that I participated in used two chemotherapy drugs that had been used for other cancers, but not together for recurrent cervical cancer. Every three weeks, I flew from my home here in Florida to Houston for chemotherapy and then would get on a plane to come home and recover. I openly shared the details of my journey through my blog, which I had named Me Strong. On the morning of my first chemotherapy, one of my close friends called to play the Rocky theme song, as she did every round of chemo because she thought that's how I needed to wake up on those days. But she also called to say that our group of friends had come up with an idea. There are five of us who had become close. Barbara Underhill, Kim Winters, Kim Martin, and Kathy Geyer. Our friendship had bonded over years of weekends away, monthly dinners, and most of all, supporting each other through motherhood. Our friendship had a certain energy. Our times were based on happiness, and cancer wasn't going to change that. My friends wanted to host a 5K in my honor here in our small community of DeLand. And while I was touched, I didn't want the race to be solely a fundraiser in the fight against cancer. I wanted people to get up and get moving. I knew that my fitness level was going to play, play a significant role in my journey. Before knowing how much the cancer had spread, the doctors ordered a bone scan. And around that time, I was out on a short run. And on that run, I was thinking, with every step I took, I knew my bones were getting stronger because of the exercise. And it was on that run that I knew that I needed to keep moving through my treatment. During chemotherapy, I ran two half marathons and three 5Ks. My friends worked tirelessly for four months. And when I say they organized a 5K, they didn't simply paint, finish, start and finish on the road and send people out for a three-mile run. They developed a route. They worked with the city and the police. They determined sponsor levels and secured sponsors. They, um, they, they, there, was, there was so much that went into that first race. And they did it within four months. And they did it all with love. And they did it while working full-time jobs. They created a logo and social media outlets for marketing. They determined the t-shirt color of, for the first race, for all of the races. And if you can imagine five women agreeing on one color, it's not always easy. <laughs> Our goal was to have 300 people participate in the first race. 900 people showed up. 
So we recognized, because the community embraced what we were doing, we recognized that we could really do good things with the money, and we chose to create a 501c3 charity called Me Strong, the name of my blog. Our reach has grown to more than just our events. When the city wanted to start a mayor's fitness challenge, they turned to Me Strong for support because our credibility within the community had already been strongly established relative to healthy lifestyles. We often hear from people who started to run or exercise as a result of one of our races. One of those people is R.C. Seville, and this, the picture of him, the first picture is the 2013, his first 5K, he's gone on to run several races, and the second picture is him after running his first marathon. Another person is Lindsay Elliott. In 2011, she was feeling a little down and knew she needed to make some changes in her life. So she knew that some friends were doing a Couch to 5K program for our inaugural race. This is a picture of Lindsay as she's crossing the finish line to a half Ironman competition. She too just ran her first marathon. Me Strong has also provided others with a way to give back in, some, in, in ways that they feel passionate about. We've had people contact us about doing CrossFit competitions or spinning competitions or the Stetson Football Women's Clinic. They're, they're events that are based around exercise and not exercise. There's silent auctions that have taken place and, and even artisan cocktail parties. So it's a way that people can use their passion to give back to others. Merchants have voluntarily given back a portion of their proceeds from the day of the race because that's a way that they can give to their community. Friends in my hometown of Lexington, Massachusetts watched my journey and also the evolution of Me Strong through social media. They asked if we would host a race in Massachusetts. This September will mark the third annual Massachusetts Me Strong 5K. The good that started with five women in a small community has grown to reach many other communities. Since our inception, we've given more than $150,000 to people battling cancer and also money to aid in cancer research so others don't have to endure what I did. On March 15, 2012, I was given the news that there is no evidence of disease in my body. I continue to go to Houston every four months for checkups, and I continue to run. Two and a half years after finishing my treatment, I decided it was time to send cancer another message. This past November, I completed my second marathon with a time that was better than my first by 40 minutes. It wasn't easy, though. There were times along the route that I struggled, both mentally and physically. So one of those times was around mile 20, and what I decided to do was to write a letter to cancer, and I would like to read that to you now. Dear Cancer, thank you. Thank you for making me the person I am today. Thank you for showing me how strong I never knew I was. Thank you for showing your weakness and allowing me to show others that you won't win. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be running 26.2 miles today, which, if you ask me, is a really badass thing to do. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me to laugh through situations and live in the moment. Thank you for helping me to show my kids what strength means. It's awesome to have your kids think you slayed a giant. Thank you for showing a community what friendship truly means. Thank you for me strong and the great things we have been able to do. Today, I'm picturing you under my feet with every step I take. You don't stand a chance. I hope we never meet again. Linda. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. That's what I did every step of the San Diego Marathon. 
That's what I did every round of chemotherapy. That's what my friends did as they tried to find a way to support me. And that's what thousands of people do each year as they participate in Me Strong Races. I urge you to get up and get moving in your own personal way. For some of you, that may be yoga or swimming or walking or riding a bike. I am living proof that a strong mind and body, regardless of the obstacle, combined with the love and support of friends and the embrace of a community can be a catalyst for change, any change that you dream possible, but that change has to start with you. Thank you.